Today, as you listen to this teaching by Pastors Ralph and Joanne Hone, we hope you'll enjoy it and learn some practical ways to walk into the awesome life God has for you. For more information and for more free teaching, visit our website, www.tapintothesource.com. You know, one of the great privileges we have here is having the dog in the house. Come on, people. So I want you to stand to your feet. I want you to give him a Sarasota Bradenton welcome like he's never heard before as he comes out. As he comes out. Come on out, Mr. Dog the Bounty Hunter. Hallelujah. <laughs> I hope you like that video. Huh? You like that, huh? Wow. Oh, I got water. Everything's ready. Ready? Here we go. When you had enough, stand up and raise your hand. <clears throat> so I was raised, I'm half Chiricahua Apache. We have any Native Americans in here? Yes, yeah, sister. So my mother, when I was small, used to take me to the reservation. My mother was the first Amer Native American Christian there was that actually believed in Jesus. So she would take me to the reservation, and as I went there, the uh, Navajo, the, weave, the girl, ladies that weave, would get around me and start dancing and say, he's the one. He's the breed, the blue-eyed. What does that mean? He's the one. He's going to be so famous. He's going to help us out. He's the one. So all the years as I grew up, I always thought that I was a legend in my own mind. <laughs> so I went around with my mom. She was a missionary. And we went to different reservations, and my mom would preach, and I would say the prayer, and I would think, like, how did Jesus feed all these people with these little fishes? Did he really just cut one and it broke off, or did he say, all right, in Jesus' name, everybody's full? You know, which did he do, right? So... I started junior high school right after elementary, and I went to school one day, and that's when in the 60s there were gangs that started to develop across America. And so I always went with my little black New Testament. <clears throat> so the first day I went to school, there was some, uh, uh, a gang, and as I walked through, I was called a prairie Indian, only the other word, a uh, sand that word. And as I walked by this car wash, they caught me in the car wash. And here they were with little rubber hoses. And uh, one of them started hitting me. And I, my father was a champion. He was a white man, was a champion boxer in the Navy. So all my life, my daddy taught me how to box so I could throw down. So as I got ready to throw down, they all jumped me. I went to the ground. And I pulled out my black New Testament. And I said, in the name of Jesus, freeze. Wow, they hit me again with the thing. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. In the name of Jesus, bam! <laughs> Whoa, do I have the concordance here? Do I have the Bible? <laughs> and it didn't work. Faith, whatever, it still beat me. <clears throat> so, you know what? I thought, this is not working very good. Instead of fighting them, I'm going to join them. So I elevated myself in the motorcycle gangs, Hell's Angels, Devil's Disciples. At 14 and 15 years old, I was the sergeant of arms for one of the most dangerous motorcycle clubs in the world called, believe it or not, the Devil's Disciples. <laughs> As I was 14, I told him I was 18. The president knew I was 16. You had to come up with a nickname, right? So... We had a guy named the Creature. Dear God. We had a guy named John the Baptist. He always ran into water and his Harley died. <laughs> so all the Christian words were c covered. So like they would say, okay, we're going to rob houses tonight because it's Wednesday. Everybody's in church. I'm like, not me. Why? Because God will strike you dead. 
well, let's do it on Sunday when everybody's in church. No. Or we'd pull over, and I'm used to eating mutton, which is sheep, but I never ate a spoiled pig. So I'd say, yeah, listen, you guys, the Bible says if we're hungry, we got to eat something kind of different. You got to say the blessing. So literally, they'd say, dog, or they'd say, Dwayne, say the blessing. So the president of the club came to me one day and said, you know, you talk about God all the time. I go, I'm sorry. Yeah. So we're going to name you God spelled backwards, which is dog. You're very loyal. You show up for every fight. So we're going to start calling you dog, not puppy. Of course, a lot of them did as I was younger, but that's where I got my nickname dog. So it's okay to call me dog. Dwayne, the bad time I'm drowning, I'd rather be called dog. Okay? So I'm knowing all the time, the Lord is my shepherd. And I knew every crime I committed, every one of them, he was watching. Well, maybe he's a little bit busy in Vietnam and I'd do the robbery. Or maybe he's a little bit busy over here. I'd do the robbery. Well, one time I moved to this place called Texas. It's here, Lord. In a little town called Pampa, Texas. So one night, my biker brothers came over, said, we need to go pick up some pot. And I heard the Lord say, I'm done with you. This is it. It's like today. This is it. For some of you, believe me, this is it. And I said, okay, for a couple weeks, I watched. I saw myself being loaded in a body bag. My Harley hit in the back of a car. I heard the zipper. So I was so careful to follow nobody too close. I made, we didn't have cell phones, so I made phone calls to make sure the guard wasn't there. I mean, I was so clean, nobody but God could have got me. We drive over the house. <clears throat> One of my brothers gets out of the car, goes inside, boom! We're like, what the heck? Comes running out, his hands all bloody. We're driving to the hospital, like, what happened? Oh my God, get him to the hospital right now, get him to the hospital. There's four of us in the car. He says, I think I shot him. I'm like, what? Shot him with what? Your shotgun, the sawed off. You're not supposed to have it on you, Donnie. I went home. I called the ambulance to get him over there. I didn't hang up the princess phone tight enough. As I explained to someone in the house who was with me what happened, they were recording it from 911. G-O-D. I got over there. I saw him bring him out on the stretcher. Brother Love in Miami, Texas is still a cop there today. Said, was it dog? It was the devil's disciples. Was it dog? He looks up and goes, no, it wasn't. I'm like, dodge that bullet. That night, he passed away in Amarillo, Texas. <laughs> the alarm went off in the morning, 6.30 a.m. Dwayne Dog Chapman is being sought for the shotgun slaying massacre of Jerry Oliver, 36 years old of Pampa, Texas. Beware of the dog. I run out the back door, pack my stuff, run right into the cop's hands. I wasn't a very good fugitive. I'm, <laughs> I'm better a hunter, right? Because guess who was on me, brothers and sisters? G-O-D, and I don't know what angel he assigned to it, but he got me. What are you doing? We're, look, we're, we're looking for dog. You, you freeze right there. I said, okay, boom, under arrest for first degree murder. They got all of us, right? We're all in jail. Bond's 50000 Back then, let's pretend like it's $5 million. Magistrate came in a day later, set my bond at five grand. Bam, I was out. Met with the devil's disciples. I said, here, here's your colors. Keeping my Harley. There's all your little ribbons and stuff. I'm done. What's the matter, dog? Yeah, <laughs> what? I'm done, bro. Till I beat this case or whatever. It, it, who that? It's a president. It says first degree murder. It's going to take more of a blessing for this. Are you being on the Jesus wagon? No, I'm on the Jesus train. <laughs> you know what? To this day, they've never talked bad to me. I met one the other day with Beth. He said, you know who you are? My brother used to ride with you. I love you, dog. 
He said, we all loved you. So I never got, you know, oh, I had to get out of the gang. They beat me up. Mm, the Lord don't do that. He fixes a gang. He fixes those people. The drug dealer, you tell him that's it. I don't want no more. He fixes the guy. <laughs> One year I stayed out of trial, out of, out of bond to trial. I went to the church, the assembly God. Hi, you need a janitor? Yes, we do. Can I be him? Yes, you can. Three weeks later, he said, here's the key to my church. So I'm like this. It was, looked a lot like this. I told Beth, I went there at night alone. When I pray, I pray in the spirit of the Chiricahua. And I pray to the Lord. So when I pray out loud in front of you, I'm like praying so you can hear me so I say the right thing. I don't know how to do that. So I say terrible prayers out loud. Because when I pray, it's to God. And I just talk to him inside that church. I went here. I anointed the things with oil. Every pew. And you did that. Because I see the pastors doing that. So I got my oil and touched every chair wherever they sit. I was like, whoa. I was, this felt good. This felt good. I went to trial for first degree murder. We all did. We went to trial the same time. Took a day and a half. Everybody stuck up for me and said he didn't get out of the car, me and the girl and another guy. They didn't get out of the car. The district attorney said, listen, in the state of Texas, if you're in the persimination of the population, you're guilty. I'm like, sure, buddy. Sitting there, cool. I knew I beat this. Walked in. We find all defendants guilty of first-degree murder. Now, Texas, you're 5 to 99 years or something called old sparky. You guys call it the electric chair. I'm like, oh, my God. At least I'll have time to repent. Mr. Chapman, stand up. Yes, sir. Hereby sentence you to five years and one day in the Department of Corrections on hard labor. I said, I can hold a snuff can over a bear's for five years. <laughs> That's what I told him. He said, good. Go to holding it. So when I got in the bus, I already had a reputation. Smart, rear end, watching. Went to Texas. I heard about getting a number, right? I got to get a number, like a phone number now, remember? Walked in. I'd never seen a ceiling so high in my life. All of a sudden, it hit me. Oh, my God. I'm in prison. What are you here for? Killing my mother? Oh, God. What are you here for? Killing my dad? Oh. What dog? What are you here for? Killing someone? Asked too many questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got a Bible in here? I said, they go, no, this is prison. There ain't no Bibles here. What? Yeah, we're past that point. We're all going to hell here. Oh, my God, right? So I start seeing things happen. 30, 68% black guys treated them terribly. I said, you can't do that. They'd come to me and say things. I would advise them, along with the Indians, white boys, and Latinos. The warden made me inmate counselor. When an inmate's mother or father died, they got thrown in the hole, the better way to put it. And I had to go in that hole and say, listen, God killed my cousin. No. Somewhere in Matthew, might be the 20th chapter, it's the only one I know where to find. Is I do, I, that's not in my memory. It says something about the thief cometh to kill, rob, and destroy. Brought out the thief is the devil. It ain't God. I'd walk out. The guy'd be kind of well. The warden say, "Boy, what would you just say to him?" I told the warden. He's like, "You're inmate counselor." <clears throat> I'm in that prison. One day, I see this guy come walking through the hallway in white starches. Every guard said hello to him. He walked by me, and I smelled high karate. <laughs> Aftershave, <laughs> straight out of heaven. Wow, I want his job. It's like when I saw Beth, I want her. I'll go back to meeting you, and I'm sorry in a minute. Okay. No, I hadn't met her yet, or I wouldn't be there. So uh, I said, how do I get that job? They were kind of telling him, I'm like, oh, this guy's high mucka mucka. I need this job. So I filled out a lie, an application that said, 
That said, I had been a barber in the, in the real world, and I took this book, was written in 1933. I rolled up toilet paper, burned it at night, and read it. How to shape, how to taper, show me pictures of guys from World War I. I'm like, okay, I know I can get this, right? Had a test with the warden, his hair was curly. Oh my God. It was easy to fake, right? Because I patted it down, put a little hairspray, came the next day and goes, you're going the hole. For what? <laughs> he wet his hair and go, look at this. And I mean, he looked like <laughs> that Saturday Night Live girl, right? <clears throat> so I said, warden, I know I was so nervous. Let me have another shot. He said, that's all you get. So I sat there and I just said, Lord, in Jesus' name, you've got to take care of my hands. One, two, three, testing. So I said, Lord, take care of these hands, and if you can make help Moses open the sea, it ain't nothing to guide these scissors in Jesus' name, amen. He come out there the next time, sat down. What I did is I got it wet, and it's easier to cut curly hair when it's wet. So is that good? Oh, really? I'm not good at that. So it's easier, hello? It's easier to cut curly hair when it's wet. So, good? No? How, let's try it just for a second. It'll be all right. It's just the devil. Here, just turn, just turn it down. Like, what is it, on nine? There, we'll get it. So, uh, I'll, I'll stand is better. So, I caught, I cut his hair wet. It looked better. I passed the test. I'm now Warden's Barber. Now, outside the prison gates, Warden, have you ever seen gun smoke? Everybody's so young in here that... Well, they have their own, you know, I had, the prison had its own barber shop outside the main gate. Nobody got to go there unless you were spoiled or a rat or whatever, but me. So I'm out there working every day. The guards came to the barber shop and I cut all the guards' hair. So I started getting in with all the guards. Found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> They'd sneak me food from the house, little pieces of steak. Here, dog. Oh, thank you. Remember that song, Tell Me His Name Again? Dog, tell me about Jesus. The guards are asking me this. What the heck? Right? So all of a sudden, I became elevated in prison. They love me. If I'd had a wife back there, I'd never leave today. I would have never left the camaraderie. I'd have never left. I know Adam didn't either, so I was all right. <laughs> so... I'm sitting in that barbershop one day, and I tell the Lord, oh, no. Now, here's another thing I did. I went to Christian services, and I'd see, like you sitting in the back row, somebody I love looks like me, only brown, and he'd get up to go give the Lord his heart, and I'd sneak behind him. And I was a little Christian, right? And I'd kneel down in front of the elder ladies of Zion. Is that better? <clears throat> Let me give you a raise if you fix that. There you go. So the elder ladies of Zion were there. That's better than to say the old ladies, right? So uh, as I was sitting there praying, can you hear me? No? Testing one, two. Is that better? As I'm sitting there praying, the elder ladies of Zion, I used to walk up to the rows, follow the guys up, because I like to hear them confess. Okay, you got to say in Jesus' name, accept Jesus into your heart. I got goosebumps all over. I love that, right? So I used to sneak up all the time. As I snuck up, the old ladies mostly would come by. Oh, sorry, the old ladies of Zion would come by. And this one in particular spun away, and she goes, this is him. This is him. Millions will follow him. This is him. This is him. Wow, I said, she's right in tune. And then the older guys would walk up, again, a legend in my own mind. And the older guys would walk up and say, this is him. The Lord hath calling you, son. My God, the God's got a blessing. Yeah, he does. No, because I knew, wow, this is confirmation. Sometimes it's the flesh. The Bible says, you know, sometimes you dance around and just dance the power away. But sometimes it's the spirit. So you were supposed to judge it. So they were right on every time. As long as they said I was going to be famous, that was fine. <laughs> so I'm sitting in the cell. I got picked as warden's barber. My bread was buttered. I said to God, uh-oh, what am I going to be, this preacher from the Black Lagoon? Hi, we'd like to introduce Dog Chapman, convicted of first-degree murder. Preach on, brother. <laughs> right? 
No, Tim, story, it don't work. <laughs> so uh, how am I going to get back to where I was? Jonah did it, but I don't fit in no whale's belly. He was a little bitty guy. You know that, right? Little bitty tiny guy. <clears throat> so I said, what am I going to have to do? Save the president of the United States? Convict saves president. So I said, Lord, how am I ever going to get back to where I was? I'm done. First degree murder. Have you ever been convicted of felony? I wrote, we'll discuss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I asked Beth's dad, can I date her? What'd you do the last 10 years? I'll talk to you later, Pop, about it. <laughs> He's a pro baseball player. I just got convicted for murder. I didn't do it, sir. <laughs> he would have shot me. So it was terrible, right? So one day, one of my counsel, counsel it, guys I counseled, was thrown in the hole because his mom died. And I looked over towards the hole, and the guards are coming out like popcorn. He's blasting them, beating them down. Whoom, whoom. I'm like, oh, my God. He comes running out of that hole, straight down the line. There's big towers in Texas where they use 30-30 rifles. I could hear the rifles go, Ch -ch. and I knew they were saying, freeze, freeze. I knew they were going to kill my friend. Six foot six. I took out after him. I go, they're going to kill Davey. Not without me, they're not because I was trying to find a way to die where I could get up there and he'd give me a pass. Right? There was a kid burning in a fire. I'm the first one through the door. So I run after him. I hear the guards yelling, dog, dog, freeze. I feel the bullets in my back. <laughs> of course, they didn't shoot because they saw me running after Bigfoot. It was his nickname. That was his nickname. Size 21 or something, Brogans, huge man. So I tackle him down, barely get his ankles. He's running like a deer. <laughs> get him down, we slide in the mud like a home run from the Yankees, right? And I hear the meanest to this day still alive, verified in the book, Lieutenant Hilligust. The meanest guard in the Texas penitentiary was right behind me. I didn't even hear him breathing like a bull. I turned around and saw him. He's like 6'9", right? Massive man. As we both go down, he does the magic thing. He threw down a New Testament. No. <laughs> Same one I carried in the 80s, in the 60s. He throws down the handcuffs on the ground and says these words. Hook him up, bounty hunter. Hey. Hey. Dog, how'd you become a bounty hunter? Be at the service today. It's a long story. <laughs> yeah. Hook him up, bounty hunter. My favorite show when I was a kid is Wanted, Dead or Alive, Not for the Blonde, Tied to the Railroad Track. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, my God. It's all about guys, bounty hunters are guys that were a little shady and then they got saved or whatever and the Lord came in or they got, did time and they come out and they're good guys now. I want that job. I walked in, dog the disciple. I came the end of the day, dog the bounty hunter. When A&E &E came to me and said, we're going to name this dog the bounty hunter, I'm like, oh, really? Is that what you're going to name the show? So, Inside the prison that night, the warden calls me to the kitchen, says, we got to transfer you. He's, the warden's getting married in three weeks. I'm cutting every single gray hair, one at a time, out of his head. <laughs> He's like, what are you doing? I look so much younger. I'm like, well, you know, warden, I'm a good barber now. <laughs> Until this night, did I say that in the book? I don't think I ever told them. Oh, I don't think I ever said that besides in the book. So uh, he says, we got to transfer you. Boy. Uh, he says, we're going to leave that there now. He says, uh, David, would you shoot that cane for me? 
So he says, we got to transfer you because now you're a rat. You ran down another inmate. You got a problem. I go, are you out of your mind? I saved Bigfoot's life. Well, we're going to leave you in your cell, cell 11, snake eyes. We're going to leave you in cell 11, and if you're still alive in the morning, everything's all right. <laughs> this is Texas in the 70s, okay? This is not no joke. It isn't today, but back then was worse. So I woke up. The bars, I slept with my head towards the bars on my back, and the bars opened up and there were stamps, coffee, cigarettes, Mimi's and Wow Wow's candy bars. I looked down, the warden came through the cells and said, boy, they don't give you a love offering. <laughs> now, Assemblies of God, we all know what a love offering is, right? Right? I'm like, wow, you know you can't have all that at the same time, but that's amazing. Looked at me, that's where I got those words. He said, Dog Chapman, your bread is a buttered. <laughs> I then told the biggest warden of every prison there is, who's probably in heaven. Not really, he went straight to hell. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Why are you in here? So I told the story I just told you. Fifteen minutes later, called the goon squad came and got me, threw me in the hole for lying to Warden Jacka. Warden Jacka called my sheriff, Ruth Jordan, in Pampa, Texas, February the 6th, 1979, only 18 months, not five years in a day. They came to me and said, here's $200, hit the road, Jack. <laughs> what? You're out of here. Your sheriff said you'd done enough time. At the bottom of the letter, it said, we knew he was going to be somebody. We had to stop him. Imagine calling my mom and dad and saying, Mom, I'm coming home. Good, Dad. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so, right then I realized that's it. No more crime. I can't do this. I can't do the crime and do the time. I cannot do this. I'm going to try to stay semi-Christian, and I'm going to go from there. Semi in the beginning. <laughs> All the way now. Curse a little, smoke cigarettes, but I'm, I'll, I'll be there holding the door open for y'all on this side of heaven. So I go to the post offices across the country. Thank you. <laughs> I go to the post offices across the country, and I get their top ten. I pick up the little thing. You know, wanted, dead or alive, you pick it up, right? So I had a little vanilla envelope thing, a big one. I tell my mom, I'm a bounty hunter, mom. I know the Lord's right with you, son. You be sure you pray with every one of them. I will, Mom. I mean that now, Dwayne. You know you can talk to him like nobody else can. I want you to pray with everyone. You don't have to pray in tongues and go all crazy. You just have to pray. <laughs> all right, Mom. I promise you I will. So I go out the first night. I dial the guy's number, some convict running for 10 years or no, two years. I call him once and hang up. Call him back. Hello. The feds are like, what? No, oh, that fed wasn't there. I'm like, what was that? It's a mama signal. Hey, I did. I caught him. Went home. Mom called her. I got him. It's like 11 o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> I took his warrant and pinned it on his body with a safety pin, headed for the federal building. It was the only building in Colorado that's got the 13th floor. Guess what? They're on the 13th floor. Why is that, feds? <laughs> so I said, Mom, you got to come with me. It's a witness. I'm a convict. They're going to know it. They're not going to know it. Well, you're going to come? Yes. So I go up there, hi, I'm Dog the Bounty Hunter. This is my prisoner. He's top 10 most wanted. <laughs> Guy's like, what kind of LST is this guy on? <laughs> <clears throat> my mom said, you know, the Lord put him in his place. The Lord has blessed my son. He's got a talent. That dog can hunt. <laughs> she goes, now it says $10,000. Is that cash or check? <laughs> well, Mrs. Chapman, if you come back tomorrow... We'll give you the money. My mom sang all the way home. Victory in Jesus. I said, yeah. She was so a little Volkswagen forever. He sought me and he bought me. Sing it, son. With his redeeming blood. It was such a fun. We spun around on the highway. And that little beetle. 
Like what's that Beatles name, that funny car? Her, yeah. We rode Hervey all the way home. So we got up tomorrow, went there, wrote me a check, 10 grand. What do you plan? I said, we're going after another one. Ain't we, Mom? <laughs> Start to walk out, they go, hey, hold it. You need to come back here. We talk to us. You can't do this. I go, listen, under the rights, the citizen's right to arrest law in the United States of America, if you know that guy to be a felon, you yourself as a citizen may apprehend him and get paid. Cops are like, hmm. <laughs> but we have a time clock that we punch out each guy. I know you guys are slow, I said. No, dog, we record everything there, how many cars are going and coming. I go, what do you need that for? I want just the guy, the peanut butter man. I don't care about the rest of the stuff. So they say, listen, do you ever heard of a bail bondsman? Of course I did, right? I go, sure. But I had no idea the bail bondsman back in the 50s had bounty hunters. There was one, I think, left in the 70s, but I don't really think so. There was me. So I went to Lucky Lucero's bail company. He had like 70 warrants, paying 10 grand a week. Paying. I go, listen, I rode, I rode with that guy. That guy's a disciple. I rode with this guy. That girl I know, his bad hair husband's a punk. <laughs> <laughs> well, how are you going to find him? I said, listen, me and Jesus got our own thing going, brother. <laughs> me and Jesus got a really solid connection. I may pull over in the highway, act like the cattle or the crowd, and I just start preaching. Lord, you're going to look real dumb tomorrow if you don't have me find this guy. <laughs> no, I'm telling you. I put him on, he puts me on the spot, I'm sorry, but I put him there to national television. So Lucky Lucero started giving me, here I started, four or five a day. Here I started hitting the national news. Here I started hitting the local papers. Dog Chapman arrest, uh, Capitol Hill rapist raped 16 women. I went to mom, I said, mom, this is really going good. She goes, oh my God, did you talk to him about Jesus? Mom, every one of them. <laughs> yeah. Because I'd say, you know, there's this guy that was convicted of murder, and he carries a badge. And I tell them my story. And 80% of them had no idea it was me. But the 20% that were forgiven said, it's you, ain't it? I said, Mom. Mom said, how you doing? I said, good. Well, the money's coming in, son. We have $16,000 in the bank. Whoa. Mom, I'm lonesome, though. I know, son. Mom, God doesn't know when I ask him, can I have a girl? He don't ever get like I get. And that's just not that. I'm lonesome. Son, the Bible says, let us create man in our own image after our own likeness. And he's got a son, and there's a Holy Ghost. And who do you think the Mutta is in that trinity? <laughs> the comforter shall come. The oh, that's the mom. Try the Adam prayer. Oh, Mom. So I said, Lord, I don't know what he said to you. Ditto. <clears throat> don't take another rib. But I don't know what he did to you. I need a woman. I need a Christian. I didn't know she's a, what do you call it? Mennonite? I need someone who believes in Christ, right? <laughs> they're tough, the Mennonites, boy. <laughs> oh, they're tough, right? So I get this phone call from this person that works for Senator Sandoval. Senator, I'm there, right? Uh, she got caught stealing a lemon. When her pager went off, she goes around. The guy's like, where are you going? Shut up. Still like that. <laughs> Only she's Annie Oakley. She got a pistol with a permit on her. So when they say you got a gun, she's like, yeah. Is it loaded? Well, I wouldn't carry an empty gun. Ma'am, freeze. So her bond's a whole $300. $30, wow, I'm rich, right? So instead of sending the bus down, driving it, the bond down, I send the bond down on the bus. So it takes eight, 10 more hours to get her out. Her dad's a pro ball player, was. So he calls me, does a co-signing, played for Kansas City. You know, they're rich, I'll take the signature. He's like laughing and stuff. Hi, oh, I love him, he had loved, he was my what a great man. So I tell her, okay, come fill your paperwork. She gets out. A week goes by. She ain't in there. Mom's like, hey, we got everybody's paperwork out. What's this Alice Smith? I go, that's an alias. 
She's Italian, you know how they are. <laughs> her last name's really small donor, whatever. So I tell her, listen, promise you, little girl, how old are you? She's 12 years younger than me. I said, little girl, I promise you right now, write this down. You ain't in here by 7 o'clock. You're going back to the hoosh gal. It's called jail, lady. <laughs> Click. She hung up on me. I thought, you little brat. <clears throat> so I'm sitting at my office desk. I got my dog, Onyx, which is a huge, I prayed for him. Lord gave me, it was a black, uh, what was it? About Great Dane, this tall. Right, smelled like a bloodhound. Perfect dog. I got Onyx sitting there. I'm sitting in all my leather, my bounty hunter stuff, ready to go get one. Around the corner. Whoa. Hi, I'm Beth. I go, wait a minute. Your name says, I'm Alice Elizabeth. We use the Beth. Oh, okay. We start filling out paperwork. I'm like, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> But I'm knowing that morality-wise doesn't make a law, but my mother would. You can't date a client. She's a client. So I happened to know of the judge that she was going in front of. So I called down there and lied and got her court date raised way up. A couple days, she went to court. And I go, now listen, Beth, you got to be really cool in here because this judge is, they call him the hanging judge. you got to be really cool. She smiles at me. She goes, okay. I go, sit down and everything's fine. All rise. We all stood up and sit down. We sat down. Judge looks over. She goes, hi, Clarence. <laughs> hi, Beth. He's like, hi, Beth. Not Alice. Hi, Beth. Oh, my God. She's in cahoots with the courts. <laughs> you know these Italianos, huh? <clears throat> so they gave her some kind of, they fine you at all? They dropped charges probably. And so we start hanging together. I come home one night all bloody. I said, I used to be a boxer, right, till 1991. So I said, baby, I was weaving and bobbing and boom, boom. The Lord was telling me, hitting with right. I'm all cut up and bloody. She's like, shut up. <laughs> I said, baby, girl, I'm telling you, man, you'd have been so proud of you, little hero doggy out there. <laughs> She's like, shut up. I said, listen, you want to go? Yep. So we arrest this guy from Mexico. I try to say, put your, I see him. We're down in the worst part of Denver. All of a sudden she goes, mm, she did the bond. There he is. I go, what? There he is. He comes out, saw her, reaches for a pistol. I tell him in Spanish, put your hands above your head right now, screaming, get right now on the ground. And all of a sudden I look, she's on the ground. <laughs> True story. I said, not you, Beth, that guy. She goes up there, Lanipa's up above your head. I said, Beth, get out of the way. Because <laughs> I got a fake pistol, right? A starting pistol. They don't know it ain't fake. I look like Clint Eastwood out there. Freeze, I'll blow your head off, right? Some words that Lord had to go, oh, God, that's it. Oh, 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 right? So she saw that, and ever since that day, she's right there with me. Yeah. <laughs> then I met a guy named Anthony Robbins. Tony Robbins is a great, great motivational speaker. Deepak Chopra is another terrific speaker. So they meet me, I meet them, and they go, hey, man, what's your secret? I go, G.O.D. Chopra says, let me show, let me talk to you about this. And we start, he's like, oh, my God, you're right. Tony Robbins goes, wow, you're right. Would you be a, I'm with the FBI. This guy's shooting it out. I go, four, five, six. He's out of bullets. Rick, get up here. It's me, dog. Dog, is that you, man? G-man's out there. I go, I know they're going to kill us both. They're holding me for hostage unless I can talk you out. Okay, dog, I'll come out. He comes out with his hands up. The feds are like shaking. On the ground, I go, listen, guys, be cool. He's out of bullets. Man, dog, I ain't got no money to buy bullets. I said, all right, you're under arrest. They say, hey, you remind me of this guy named Tony Robbins. Who's that? This great big motivational speaker, we want you to meet him. <coughs> I meet Tony Robbins. He says, will you come with me to speak in front of 7,500 people in Austin? I go, Austin what? Texas. No. <laughs> well, bring your faith. He don't want to go there either. He's a Jewish guy, wears hand, sandals, got long hair. They'll boot him out. 
Yes, okay. Finally, mom says, listen, they're giving you $15,000. This is in the 80s. I shouldn't have said that. They're giving me a lot of money. I shouldn't have said that. They're trying... <laughs> So we live streaming. So he gave me a lot of money. So mom said, you go there and you get to knowledge this guy and you get to know this guy because this guy is very intelligent. This guy said, if you'll say something in your heart and believe it, it will come true. Son, say unto the mountain, be thou removed into the sea. Go meet this guy. I'm packing your stuff. Go. So I get in the crowd. There's 7,500. I sit down like with here. There's flowers all around. He goes, what state are you in when you're out hunting? I'm in Colorado. He's like, no. What state am I? I'm in the laser light. Have you ever robbed a bank? I go, I'm getting out of here right now. <laughs> All of a sudden, I look around. There's highway patrol everywhere, cops everywhere from Texas. I'm like, this is a setup. They're, <laughs> no, they're mad at me for arresting everybody. They know I got something going on. They're making me confess in front of all these feds. I'm going back to jail. Have you ever robbed a savings and loan? Of course, 14 of them. I told him, I'm not saying a word. I'm done with this stuff. But I didn't say stuff. He's like, dog, it's okay. Relax. Talk to us. An hour and a half, two hours. He goes, now, how many cops are in the crowd? You would have freaked out. It wasn't half, but it was a lot. They said, we want everyone here to hug dog and tell him thank you. Two and a half hours later, from the top here to the bottom, completely soaking wet, highway patrol started hugging me. I love you. I said, what did you just say to me? You're highway patrol. What? Sheriff said, I'm so proud of you, son. What did you just say to me? You're a sheriff. You are got a real badge. I got a fake one, but oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> God bless you, and God bless you. And you know, dog, we pray like you do. What? Cops pray? Whoa, whatever. I thought y'all was demon-possessed. <laughs> <laughs> so fast forward now Where, how much time I got two hours <laughs> so uh, I'm there the cops Tony Robbins asked me you want a job speaking hanging around with me I'm like sure not just for the money but the camaraderie I loved him it went really good so five minutes really wow so fast forward I met Martin Sheen. Martin Sheen says, listen, you need to be on television. I said, can I say in Jesus' name, amen? Mm, I'm not sure. Back then, no. Amen was it, Jesus' name. We got offered the less money. We were allowed to say Jesus' name. Me and her pulled under a driveway to a restaurant and looked at each other and goes, should we take the big one or the little one? We could say Jesus' name. She's like, are you that stupid? <laughs> we're taking the Jesus' name one. Because we were like tested by God right there, right? We did the show. I said, listen, you know how we Christians are. Don't throw your pearls before the swine. So when the guy, we caught him, I said, cut cameras now. We got to fix this guy. Bro, you all right? No. Bro, your feet hurt. Yes. You want a cheeseburger? You want us to pray for, please pray for me? Every one of them. So the first night the show comes out, we're watching a premiere, it's called. It's intermission. I told the director, producer, do not show the niceness. People want me to kill them, you know. Kill them all, let God sort them out, dog. We won't, dog, liar. <laughs> Second part of the show comes on. Here he is. We'll fix you. We'll help you. We fix the guy. We helped him. She says, our career came and went that quick, baby. <laughs> Because, you know, we thought, well, they're not going to like this. Helping these scumbags out. The next day, they said, listen, your show just hit number one in the world on cable. Wow. Yeah. And they come to me now, these convicts say, where's my prayer? David and Randy sitting here. David's my guy, goes through the doors. David told me once, I won't just go to the gates of hell with you. I'll go through hell with you. Amen. This one. My Rainy and my sister-in-law is in the back, best sister. She's going to shoot me if I don't say she's really nice. No. <laughs> but, uh, and then Rainy, as David's husband, manages my stuff. But God gave us a team that is incredible that we go out and we still hunt. We're doing something a little bit different now. What did I say, baby? Something wrong? 
God has blessed me. How many minutes I got? Two. God has blessed me coming in and out. Now I'm going to tell you something, right? It's not, I didn't commit the murder. I didn't even see it, guys. I didn't even see it. I heard the shot. So for me to say, you know, can you believe I've been convicted of murder to be up here? I really didn't. It wouldn't be today. But can you believe what the Lord did? All you have to do is do this. And I get kind of embarrassed still. I'm going to say in Jesus' name, amen. It's kind of scary, you know, a little bit. Okay, they can all think I'm stoop, but I say it anyway. I heard, I, I'll stop with this. I had no idea this scripture was there. I find all these scriptures. Dake just don't cover them all. You go Google, man. It's happening. <laughs> you Google the Bible. We don't got to go concourse. Look for that Google. Bing, bang. Did you know the Bible says, if you will give me glory? No. I will fill your house with gold. Kind of like that. If you give me, if you say good things about me, your God, your dad, your pop, your savior, you will freak out at how much bless. I had no idea in Jesus' name got me that. I was doing it because of mom and how he did me in the prison. And I knew he was there when I cried at night and said, why am I in here? And I opened the Bible and I said, why am I in here? And I pointed down like you're not supposed to do. And it said, lovest thou me? Feed my sheep. <laughs> Thank you. So, this is the thunder. Here comes the lightning. <laughs> Love y'all. Thank you. God bless. <clears throat> Thank you. How awesome is that? Can I get you guys just to stand, stay on your feet for just a moment? Because, you know, wasn't, it's amazing to hear his story and amazing to hear what God has done in his life. But I know the heart of Dog and Beth, and that's that it not just be about their story, but that you have the chance for it to be your story. And he doesn't go out of his way to grab all these people, stick them in his back seat, and share Jesus with them without him coming here and wanting you to know Jesus personally right. too. It's one thing to know about God, but it's another thing to know God. And the Bible says that the only way to the Father is through Jesus Christ. It's a simple prayer. We want to just lead you in it. Um, I want everyone just to close your eyes for a moment. Because I don't want to leave here without giving you a chance to make Jesus the Lord of your life. And just say, hey, you know what? I have a story too, and I need a second chance. And he is a God of second chances. So we just want to lead you in a prayer. And if that's you, I just want you to pray this prayer in your heart. I want you to, to know that God hears you. You don't have to get your life together first and then come to God. You can't get your life together without God. He wants you just to come as you are. I want to invite everybody just to pray this with me goes like this, Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' I name. I ask that you forgive me. I ask that you forgive me. I need your help. I need your help. Jesus. Jesus. Come into my life. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We hope you enjoyed this message. For more free teaching and information about The Source, please go to www.tapintothesource.com.